Hi all, I'm Anirudha here. I'm an AWS Certified Solution Architect, Associate level. And uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, what is the requirement of AWS. There are a lot of uh, cloud provider in the market. What is the need that we should use the AWS? So we'll uh, take on that point in this uh, session. So the first thing is, then uh, when, whenever we migrate to cloud, there should not be any restriction like the uh, number of services that we use or the application that we use right now or we sh uh, should not have to trade off with the uh, any availability or flexibility so that's the one thing that A AWS is very prompt about so first thing is so <clears throat> so first point is freedom for my application for in cloud so when we migrate to cloud it doesn't mean that we should uh, trade off with uh, uh, any of the components that are existing in our uh, present architecture or system so aws doesn't uh, need to doesn't need you to sacrifice any of that all all of the your current existing services and functionalities can be integrated with aws in very uh, better way next thing is uh, it shouldn't limit your programming uh, it shouldn't limit your language or the uh, architecture or the software that you use. So that's the another thing, a very uh, important thing about the AWS. That uh, even when, uh, even if you want to use AWS extensively in your existing model, in that case there are SDKs available for every language. Maybe it's Java, Python, .NET, C Sharp, uh, .NET, PHP, whatever language it is. The AWS has uh, its uh, SDK is available for that. Now uh, you there are so you can use it with any programming model or language, and there are the op uh, range of op operating system you can use. You can use uh, made by Linux, Ubuntu, CentOS, or uh, any Windows specific uh, server. So you can use any of them. It doesn't AWS doesn't limit you to specific servers, uh, uh, to specific operating system or programming languages. Now the thing is AWS has provided more than forty plus uh, different products there are products like uh, ec2 s3 which are very basic product required for computation storage or there are product like dynamodb which provides functionality for nosql and after that there are products like uh, transcoder which is a uh, transcoding system for you can use for your video conversion or there are content uh, it can be a content delivery network like cloudfront or route 53 uh, the dns system that you can use so the AWS satisfy your every need which you have in the so AWS satisfy your every need uh, in your current existing architecture and uh, apart from that it gives you access to the global environment which is uh, created by AWS and work very efficiently if you are using a content delivery network like CloudFront so they have the edge location in every continent and uh, uh, this limit this helps you to limit your latency and uh, the resulting time to reach reach out to your customers so uh, that's the one thing that you know, we need to uh, consider about aws while designing an architecture in aws its global architecture its global setup and how we are going to get benefit from that and the uh, fourth important thing is like uh, if we are going to start an application or if um, we are going to set up an application in that case the first requirement is to have that much of uh, servers and all so you have to invest your money in first into the number of servers so which is a very um, which is very costly and you don't know how your application uh, will get response and uh, how it is how it is going to perform or if you need uh, changes or if you need to make any architecture changes or server capacity changes into that so all these uh, things uh, cannot be considered until the product is launched so instead of paying upfront cost why not to pay just for what you consume so that's when the cloud come into the picture. That's very one of the aspect of the cloud. So the AWS is the uh, uh, cheapest cloud available right now in the uh, whole race of these uh, cloud vendors. AWS is provides the based uh, servers, uh, so base server configuration as per your need, and they're uh, cheapest than the like uh, than their competitors like Azure or Cloud uh, Google App Engine. Now. Uh, next thing is while using the AWS if you are using a server from AWS or database from AWS it doesn't mean that uh, the tools that you are using for configuring the system or manage, managing your system uh, your servers will not be 
which are directly integrated to your servers so if you are using aws it doesn't mean that uh, there will be any restriction on this use so that's why uh, because so you can set up a vpn or you can directly integrate your uh, system tools with the aws servers or you can just uh, put them or install and configure them into your aws architecture itself so that's also one of the possibilities so one important thing that we need to consider in short is that aws doesn't limit your uses or uh, your control over your architecture second thing it is very cheap third thing you don't need to make any upfront investment into your application you just pay for what you use and the third very important thing is it has a global architecture so you can design a very fault tolerant application and it uh, also doesn't limit any of your uh, functionalities or uh, any of your functionalities or doesn't limit you by any means so now next thing that we need to consider is like uh, what is the position of aws in the market in comparison of uh, comparison of its competitors like uh, there are a lot of cloud provider like rxspace uh, google uh, windows azure uh, joint digital ocean so we need to consider that so if you can see this is a quartner magic quadrant of 2014 for infrastructure as a service we also call it as IaaS. So, if you can see in the leader quadrant, the AWS is leading all the way. Microsoft is somewhere down there. So, Microsoft has launched Azure, which is uh, not I'll not consider as a very good product because it has a very high downtime. Because in 2014, the AWS was down. Uh, the overall downtime for AWS was around 2.75 hours, while for Microsoft Azure, it was uh, like uh, 24 hours plus. So you can consider the difference between the uh, AWS and Microsoft Azure. Then there in the bottom we have the IBM software, which is uh, launched by uh, launched by IBM recently. Then the Google App Engine, but these are not considered as leader into the uh, cloud market. So the uh, so what makes AWS a leader in the whole uh, range of cloud providers? First thing is AWS has a range of services that uh, no other uh, service provider has. AWS pro provides you more than 40 plus services. So you can migrate your full data center, your full architecture. You, you can even put your whole system into the AWS without any problem. You will have every service that you need and you will have every functionality the, that you, have, you had in your data center. And best thing is there will be no headache of migrate, uh, managing a data center and no labor cost or anything else re, uh, regarding that. So this is the reason that AWS is leading all the way into this uh, architecture, into this uh, quadrant. And another, and the, as uh, you can see that uh, most rest of the cloud providers are following the footsteps if, they, uh, if that's possible for them, like Microsoft. Now, when we see, uh, get rid of uh, your management hassles. So what does, what does that mean? So first thing, if you have a data center, these are the few things that you need to consider. Like uh, you have to consider the power that you need. You have to consider the cooling. You have to consider the cabling and networking. Then you have to provision the racks and server yourself. You have to install them, configure, and ch uh, check if they are uh, working properly all the time. Then you have to uh, need to provide the high storage depending on your application and then also a labor cost which is associated with this so yeah so these are the function these are uh, the things that uh, you need to manage if you are managing your own uh, data center but if you are using a cloud it doesn't limiting you to uh, it doesn't making any boundaries for you so why would you use a data center when cloud is a better option so you don't have to buy and install if you are using cloud you don't have to install a new hardware or set up it set it up or provide it new in uh, space and all so you get uh, rid of all these things now let's go to the next point yep aws is for 400 percent more reliable and also it pro it needs it just takes one fourth of your cost of your on premises infrastructure like uh, for setting up a data center and every data center with the uh, a uh, few hundred servers you'll need like uh, around a few million dollars to set it up but if you're using aws so in that case you won't be paying upfront or investing upfront even before you launch the application you 
because you will pay just for what you use and depending on the performance or the response you can scale scale up or scale down your uh, servers or storage so <coughs> uh, aws also has the very less downtime as i have told you in 2014 aws has only a uh, two points uh, two point something few hours of uh, downtime which is very low considering to the um, existing downtime into the uh, over current setup i guess because uh, as far as i know uh, most of the time our existing setup has more downtime than the cloud infrastructure has and uh, cloud will provide you the highest savings and uh, that's obvious because the aws is uh, specially dedicated to only provide you the uh, base services and is uh, that's its job so it's taking all the hassle management hassles from us and taking it to the themselves and they are providing us a high capacity without any limitations or restrictions so that's why you uh, you can have this 70 uh, percent savings in comparison of on-premises solutions next thing is fault tolerance when we talk about fault tolerance and we're uh, a highly available architecture one thing uh, we need is a uh, architecture which has a just don't have any limited scope when I say limited scope, I mean that it should not be restricted to any physical uh, physical data center location or something. AWS do have their data center uh, spread across the globe. So you can uh, you can design an uh, application in a such a way that even if any one of the region is not working. Let's say your application is, uh, you have set it up your application for the Oregon region. And by some chance, the Oregon region is not working. So uh, if you're you are running a business on the uh, on your web base of web server you shouldn't lose your customers so you can take uh, uh, run your business you can design a fault or uh, application which will distribute the, that tra traffic to the north ca northern california region aws has more than nine plus regions more than nine regions around nine regions so you can uh, design your and in every region they have minimum two availability zone so you can design your application in so, so in such a way that even if one of the availability zone goes down it it can be run from another availability zone so basically avail availability zone is a or we can call it a az az uh, is the architecture are the data centers which are located from 200 kil kilometers away from each other so even if your one of the data center goes down by any problem it will your application can be still running uh, onto the sep uh, on the second AZ, but you should have to consider the uh, architecture in such a way that even if one AZ goes down, you it should be able to run into the second AZ. You have to design your architecture in that way. So uh, even the recovery, uh, recovery, uh, recovery is uh, even if uh, there is a data loss. So recovery is very easy because AWS uh, replicates its data around the data centers. So any of them goes down. And uh, when it comes up again, the data that data will be replicated, replicated data will be uh, came back to your existing application, your existing AZ data center. Now, this is about your designing a uh, fault tolerant, highly available architecture. So that's all, guys. For now, we'll get uh, inside of now AWS services in the into the next session. Thanks for watching.